And this is my video on Neptune for 2016. Who's being hit by Neptune? Who's being blessed by Neptune? And what Neptune's doing to the world stage? I'll do the individuals first and then we'll look at the bigger picture. But please bear in mind this is being recorded at the start of a Mercury retrograde in early January. Um, Neptune's in Pisces. It's been in Pisces for three or four years. It's going to be there for another nine or ten years. Neptune is particularly affecting a number of people in a challenging way, especially those born in the last couple of days of February and the first couple of days of March. Those people born in the first two, three days of September. Those people born at the, the last day or two of May and the first of June, maybe the second of June. And those people born in the last, say, the 30th of November and the first, second, third of December. If you're one of these people, then you're going to be finding that 2016 is going to be one of those years that is somewhat nebulous. There's a degree of uncertainty, confusion as to the veracity of who is telling you the truth, what is really going on, where you fit into the big picture. And there is likely to be an element of fatigue, not physical exhaustion, but fatigue at the physical, mental, emotional, psychological, the works. And if you go through this year where you suddenly go flat as a pancake and experience an element of fatigue, go home have a bath, go to bed, sleep. The next day you'll be fine. But if you're one of these people born on those dates I stipulated, then you can expect this to happen three or four times over the coming year. Alternatively, Neptune's working rather well for those people born on June the 30th, July the 1st, 2nd, uh, you're, as, as well as those people born um, around October the 30th, 31st, November the 1st and 2nd, you're in an excellent position to find that without even realising it, this year is slowly becoming more gentle, more refined, more subtle and aesthetic. And that the quality of people coming into your life should reflect these energies. And there's some of you who are looking very healthy under Neptune's aspects. I'm looking at those Taurians um, born around May, May 30th, 31st. Sorry, April 30th, um, May 1st, 2nd, 3rd. You're in an excellent position for Neptune to be working with you, as are those Capricorns born around um, January the 1st, perhaps December the 31st, January the 1st, January the 2nd. If you're one of these people born at the end of December, start of January, or the end of April, start of May, then this is a year where opportunities for much more quasi-spiritual artistic experiences come in through things like dance, choreography, film, theatre, music, art in some shape or form and if you're one of these people then this is a great year for you because you're going to find you're becoming more empathic, intuitive, sensual. Neptune's in Pisces, the sign that it rules, so we would think that this would be an easy transit, but it's not turning out that way. Neptune has, a lot, uh, Neptune has a lot to do with things like spirituality, asceticism and subtlety, but also gullibility, deception and avoidance, as well as escapism and addiction. Pisces is a sign that deals with the nebulous, the more imaginal, the dream, the vision, the unconscious, the subconscious. Neptune likes it there but not this year. Reason being is that Saturn is squaring Neptune from December 2015 through to October 2016 in a way that's bringing a lot of challenges. Saturn, whatever it does, tries to bring structure, order and form. Um, and in Sagittarius, it's trying to bring these concepts of structure into words around truth, loyalty, religion, honesty, transparency. But Neptune is dissolving everything that Saturn does. And every time that Saturn tries to bring a degree of truth into the world, Neptune's going to go, yes, but what about this? What about that? There is no sense of transparency around the dealings of the larger world estates at the moment. Conversely, Saturn squaring Neptune, every time that Neptune tries to bring a degree more spirituality, subtlety or aestheticism into the world, Saturn's going to say, yes, but you've got to play by the rules. 
You've got to bring a degree of structure and form into it. Saturn squaring Neptune over the coming 12 months is likely to bring uh, a degree, a flood of empathy, of compassion, of sensitivity for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. It's likely to exacerbate the ongoing flood of refugees around the world. It's also likely to be astrologically representative of a flood of extremes when it comes to weather. The, the areas that are getting flooded will get worse. The areas that are getting dry and arid will get worse. Because of this, I do anticipate a degree of famine and um, possibly some serious environmental degradation over the coming year, caused primarily by climate change, which may or may not be down to human interference, but certainly human unwillingness to tackle climate change is making the situation a lot worse. And unfortunately, this is going to continue. I'm not that optimistic about Neptune's position over the coming year. There's a few dates in mind that particularly jump out. The square from Saturn to Neptune is at its strongest over the period of mid-June to mid-September of this year. So over this three-month period, I do expect the, uh, the, 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 the situations involving the displaced, the unfortunate, the uh, disempowered to become ever more notable and stronger. Uh, apart from that, there are no outer planetary influences to Neptune. Admittedly, April's going to be a bit of a stinker at the economic level, with Jupiter opposite Neptune and Saturn squaring them both. But that's not as strong as it could be, and it will only last a few weeks. Um, if there's a trigger point with Neptune, it's going to be January the 1st, 2017, when Mars in the sky conjuncts Neptune in Pisces. But we'll deal with that one another time. Neptune in 2016, folks, it's going to be a hard one. We're not going to be able to measure the reality of situations. Every time we try and get the truth, there's going to be different versions being propagated. And the hardest thing for individuals to do with regard to Neptune and Pisces over 2016 is to hold a centred, grounded and balanced opinion without letting media or other people's opinions push us to extremes. And that perhaps is the hardest challenge of 2016, to hold a steady and stable course. Neptune in Pisces, it's a tough one this year, hardest one of the year. Good luck world, we're going to need it.